We now have something happening. Uh, words. We now have something happening when we submit the form, but it's not yet taking the text that we type, is it? So let's see what we can do about that. I'm going to throw a debugger in here again. I'll throw it after prevent default this time. Debugger. Refresh. Try submitting the thing. And now I've got this EV, right, which is an event. Let's have a look at that again. Event target is the form. I hover over it and I get the form. What do you suppose the event target is? Anybody know what it is? What it means? Yeah. Good guess. If it were a button click, if we were waiting for a, a button to be clicked, what do you think the event target would be on that? The button. So the target here is the form, right? We have the uh, we have the type is uh, it's a lot of stuff. Type, wherever that is, <laughs> it's there. Event.type is submit. So that would be click. But event.target would be the button. So what is, what is it? What is the event target? It's the thing that the event happened to, basically. So it's the thing that the event happened on. Every event happens to an element of the page, and that is the target of the event. <coughs> In this case, we happen to already have our form saved as a variable, but it feels better not to really couple this to that. And if we need the form inside here to get it from the event, that way we know it was the very form that triggered this um, event handler. Did I define event handler? Anytime we have a function whose job is to respond to an event, we call the, that an event handler. And functions that uh, act as event handlers have some special things about them. So I could get to the form by event.target. So I want the value of this input. This rascal. Event also has, among many other things, this property elements, which is an HTML form controls collection. It's again a very array-like thing. Technically, it's another kind of object, but it's very array-like. And it has two things in it, the input and the button. If I had other stuff inside the form, like a span or a, an image or something, that would not show up in this collection. This is just the actual form controls, the input and the button. So I could get to the input by saying event dot elements uh, square bracket zero looks like. I knew that wasn't going to work in the console. Why are you being that way? Um, we could also get to it because we gave it a name. Because we gave the input a name, we could say, again, if event.elements were working in the console, we could say event.elements.spell name, the name we gave it. I'm sorry, because not event.elements, form.elements. So event.target is the form, right? Event.target.elements gives us this. So event.target.elements, square bracket zero, would give us the input or event.target dot spell name also gives it to us because that's the name we gave it. Okay, so now I have the input itself. How do I get the value? Yeah, dot value. It's not text content. This doesn't have text content, right? There's no closing tag. Dot value gives us whatever is typed in there. So to do that in code, you could say const f equals event.target. That's the form. 
I could say const uh, spell name equals f dot spell name, which is the input itself, dot value, which is what was typed in there. And you could name this something else, like just spell or something, if you wanted to make the point that this variable name does not have to match this name. I'm going to call it spell name, though. Count spell name equals f dot spell name dot value. Document query selector h1. Text content instead of yield storybook. How about spell name? Let's try it out. Summon creature. Hey, it worked. How about that? Questions about that? Seem legit? Yeah. Right. Um, that just happens because we're listening for a, sub a form submit instead of um, a button click. So pressing enter inside a focused element inside a form submits it. So as long as I didn't click somewhere else first. Yep, it just happens. So the key was don't listen for a click. Listen for a submit. So right now, all our changes are in our working directory, right? We want them in our repository, so we must first add them. So we add them to the staging area, git add dot. Now they're here, but we want to actually make a checkpoint for ourselves so we can get back to here later. So for that, we commit. Git commit. This commit will update the heading with text from the form. Now, it is actually the latest commit in our local repository, but it is not yet synced with GitHub. So for that, we have to push. There we go. Good questions?